Hi, I make this video for two reasons. One is that I get a lot of questions about these things. And the second is that I'm going to do a series about how to use the tools within your door when recording, producing, arranging and mixing. And this is about using presets in plugins. Should you or should you not? Well, there is one way. Let me show you. In my opinion, there's no way you can use presets for things like EQ and compressors, because how can the plugin know how the sound is? Was it a vocal? Was it an instrument? How did the instrument sound? What microphone was used? What room was it recorded in? Or, or was it a sample? The plugin can't know that. You have to adjust it to your own liking and learn the tool. And yeah, I know that you have to put in a lot of effort and learning stuff and you just want a quick fix so you can mix quickly, right? There, there's no such thing. But if you're smart about it, there's fast and efficient ways to learn. And one way is to use presets. Yes, we will use presets to learn how to use the tools. Let me show you. So here we have the Roger That Song of 2021. Just a quick mix. It sounds like this. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough. And so on. And let's use some presets and see what the plugin manufacturer, in this case Logic, because I will use Logic plugins mostly, mostly because they are clear to see what you do. You can use whatever plugin you like in any door for this. Uh, let's go to the bass drum and solo it up. And it sounds like this without anything on. And then we have an EQ. And let's go for a bass drum preset, drums, uh, low end kick. And turn the EQ on. Not bad, let's try the next one, modern kick. Nope, I didn't like that. And natural snare then, uh, yeah. So let's go to that low end kick that was a little bit better. Now let's look at what they've done. They boosted a lot of low end down in that area and also a little bit around 100 hertz. They're taking out a lot of mid frequencies at about around 400 hertz at 7.5 decibels. They were a little bit more at 900 and boosted a little bit at 4000 and taking away some top end. Now we'll try to remember those frequencies and, and like analyzing what they have done and reset this EQ and then adjust it myself and listening at the same time, of course. A little bit of low end. Take out some mids, 400 was it? Yeah, I decided to go a little bit lower than 400. Now I'm at 350-ish. And let's see if we can find the point also. Something like that, and take away a little bit of the high end also, like it was on the preset. Now I have learned what the preset was doing and then made an EQ adjustment myself. Let's go to the snare and do sort of the same thing. And then we're going to do a trick. The snare sounds like this without the EQ on. Not bad, a little bit flat maybe. Let's go to drums and where we have the EQs. We have a, a refresh snare. Not bad. Next one, rim snare. 
No, I didn't like that. Ringing snare. No. Let's go to that refresh snare. What did they do? They took away a bit, a bit of the really low end where the snare isn't sounding and then boosted a little bit at around 138 hertz and cut some mids and a lot of treble boost. Let's see if we can do the same with this. I will remember what the plugin have done and then I will start by adjusting the low end here. Boost a little bit of the low end of the snare drum. Take away a little bit of the mids. And boost some top. Not bad, we started here. And now the snare drum sounds like this. If you think this is difficult, don't worry, I'm going to do a series about using these tools and try to make it as fast learning process as possible in the next few months with EQ, compressors, modulation, filters and so on. I also did a video a long time ago how to define frequencies. I will link that in the end of the video and also down in the description. Of course. Now let's see if we can find some inspiration for this snare drum. Instead of using a snare drum preset, let's go for something else. Let's say vintage keys. This is a perfect example because now you can analyze why does the snare drum sound like this because of the EQ. Well, they have taken away a lot of the top end and they have boosted some harsh mid frequencies, but that could be cool if you like that kind of thing. I will go back to the drums and the refresh snare, and then we will look at a compressor. So I have a compressor set on the drum bus here, Logic's compressor. Uh, the drum sounds like this without any compression. And let's go for some drums. Drums, fat live drums. That's pretty cool sounding. What have they done? done? Well, the threshold we have to adjust for every track anyway, because the plugin can't know what level we have recorded the drums on. The ratio, pretty low. That means that it doesn't compress so much and you can lower the threshold so it compresses more all the time than just take the peaks. Attack and release are really important and here's the attack pretty fast 5.5 milliseconds and the release pretty slow for drums 150 milliseconds and they also use the vintage FET settings here in the compressor. Let's lower the threshold and see how it sounds when it's really pumping. That is actually not a bad preset for being a preset. Maybe you just have to adjust the threshold and the makeup gain and you can go from there and have it as a starting point, maybe. The only time I use presets normally is on reverbs, but I don't use the presets as they are normally. I normally tweak them a bit, but I have the preset as a starting point. And that's what we're gonna do now on the lead vocal. I have a reverb set up. And with the Valhalla Vintage ver Verb, once again, I chose a reverb where the settings are easy to see. So uh, without any reverb, the vocals sound like this. The only thing I know is that I don't know. Pretty flat and boring without the reverb. So let's choose a preset. Let's choose a holes and uh, we go for... Uh, Randall Hall, what that is, I don't know. And turn the reverb on. The only thing I know is that I don't know and Too big for me for, for this song, maybe another song. Let's go to Room. Dark Vocal Room. 
The only thing I know is that I don't know enough. Sounds okay. It sounds like a natural room. Let's go to plates and see what we have. Vocal plate. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough. At Not bad. Let's take the next one, also vox, vox plate. The only thing I know. I think I like that, but I want it longer, so I will just increase the decay. Let's say to around two seconds. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all. So I chose a preset and then I just tweaked one knob and now I have a sound that actually works. I know all these settings and reverbs and EQs and compressors and such. And if you don't, follow me the next few months and I will show you fast way to learn them. And your music and your mixes are gonna thank you. And also, it's fun to learn, isn't it? Learn in Swedish is lära. Lära. Until next time, Roger that.